Well, it's really been a fun season so far for the Cardiac Coyotes, who've pulled off some amazing comebacks against big time programs. Well, tonight, USD hosting 22nd ranked Missouri State at the Sanford Coyotes Sports Center. Monica Arns did all she could tonight, pops for three and hits it. She led the Coyotes with 19 points. But watch Missouri State's hustle on this play. Diving, passing, and it's gonna be Bryce Caleb for three, beating the quarter buzzer. She had 12 points. There's a reason why this team is rated number 22nd in the country, and they showed it tonight. Kira Duffy drives and scores, but she struggled from the floor, as did her teammate. She had 12 points tonight. Hannah Shervin held to just eight points tonight. And at the other end, Missouri State just simply had too much. Sydney Manning goes in, off glass, nice fake, banks it up and in as uh, they, again, prove why they were ranked number 22. Here's Duffy. Duffy, left-handed scoop. Nice shot there. But Alexa Willard would lead the way for uh, Missouri State. She had 21 points, three coming right there. Final score, 74-66 in favor of Missouri State. Now, though you may not have noticed Gray Zabel during any of Peer's many scoring plays in their run of consecutive state championships, three of them, he's always been the center of attention for the governors. Zach Borg has more on our Carl's TV and Appliance Athlete of the Week. Most offensive linemen are known for being humorless and stoic focus solely on their job. A lot of uh, lifting weights and eating a lot of food. Gray Zabel is not most offensive linemen. You don't see many kids that grow up wanting to be linemen and growing up wanting to, to block, you know, and Gray's that kid. He loves, uh, you know, identifying and thinking new plays and formations and all that, and uh, he thinks like a quarterback, but, you know, his attitude's every bit lineman, and he's a goofy kid to have around. 255 pounds, senior number 74, Gray Zabel. Which has a lot to do with the fact he grew up with a quarterback and his older brother, Peyton. There was a lot of times where I wanted to just let my guy go through after a good butt chewing from him, but he uh, taught me a lot of leadership, and. Uh, shapes me into who I am today. Which is a dominant force on both the offensive and defensive lines that's helped lead Peer to three consecutive state championships. It's unreal. I mean, he was like a freight train coming through. Yeah, I wouldn't want to get in his way if I was on the other team. We joked with him, you know, as, as he grew into his junior year, like, hey, do you, do you want to take over for Peyton and be the quarterback? And he's like, nah, I want to block. You know, and I said, that's just a special attribute to a kid uh, that wants to play physical football. Which is what Gray will do next fall at North Dakota State as a full-time offensive lineman. Though if they ever need an emergency punter. I enjoy punting, it's fun. Uh, there's a lot of jokes going around through the coaches that the center's punting, but it's a good time. It's just one more way that there's more than meets the eye with this big guy. Zach Borg, KDLT Sports. What a talent. All right, the Mount Marty men. Hey, speaking of talent, they're off to a great start. And tonight, the Lancers hosted 16th ranked Jamestown. First half, Lancers down by three when Ryan Warren gets the steal. Goes ahead to Chris King. He's going he's gonna to do the finger roll. Beautiful shot there for King, who had 16 points. He's pretty much been right near the top of the leaders in scoring every game for him. Elijah Pappas with a theft. He goes coast to coast. He actually led the Lancers with 17 points, and they led by two at halftime. Expanded the lead when Beersford's Jonah Larson hits the three, led by as many as seven. But in the final minute of regulation, the Jimmies come back. Terrell Alfred with a game-tying three. Game goes to overtime, but watch what uh, Colby Johnson is able to do here off the miss. Beautiful basket flying through midair. Final 93-88, Mount Marty now nine and two. The Augustana men hosting Nebraska Christian tonight at the Elman Center. Let's check out some of the highlights. These young guys are still really good. Last year, they're almost all freshmen. Michael Schaefer, uh, inside for two of his 13 points for Tom Billiter. Then it's going to be uh, Dylan LeBrun. Wow. He had 11 points, six rebounds, and that was the play of the night right there for the Flandreau native. 11 points, six rebounds. And the former Sioux Valley native, Trevor Hansen, gets the screen, cuts to the hoop, 88-48. Augustana wins. And the Augie women took on Bellevue in the first game tonight. Waving to the camera as they came out of the court. That's kind of cute. My daughter-in-law would never wave to me when I'd go shoot her games, but one of her teammates always would, and she got in trouble with the coach. Uh, it was uh, Lauren Sees connecting from the outside for three of her 18 points. Abby Hora, whoosh, she had 16 points. 
and uh, they can play some defense too. Izzy Van Veldhuizen, the former Washington Warrior, with the turnover, she takes it all the way, and Augie wins it, 82 to 49. South Dakota again loses, 74 to 66. Uh, Mount Marty beating Jamestown, 55-53. McKinney with 16 points and 10 rebounds. On the men's side, Augie wins by 40. Mount Marty, you saw the highlights, they win by five. Uh, and also, I think that was our last score. Yep, it was. Now, despite losing Saturday, the SDSU football team has plenty to be thankful for this week as they celebrate the holiday with friends and family. They gather to watch the selection show. They're number seven. They get a home game. They're even in the opposite bracket from North Dakota State. And you know, the best part is our defense is all pretty healthy. Um, and that's what's gonna carry us. That's what has to carry us throughout the playoffs is defense. Obviously we're gonna do what we have to do on offense, but everyone knows defense wins championships. So um, I'm excited to see how they play. I'm excited to get Pierre and CJ back. And what a difference that'll make. By the way, the Wolves win tonight and the Wild lose to the Rangers in overtime. We'll be right back.